Hey guys, and welcome back to another plugin review. Today we are looking at Boz Digital Labs Lay Snapette. Now, if you look back a couple of weeks ago, I did El Clapo, and Lay Snapette is part of the three kind of sampled human noise plugins from Boz Digital Labs. So there's El Clapo, Lay Snapette, and does boot. So I'm going to be doing does boot as well. So look out for that video. And if you haven't seen the El Clapo video, go check that out as well. They all have the same features. They're just different sounds. So El Clapo is clapping, lay snapette, which we're doing today is snapping, and das boot is stomping. So they all kind of make sense. So um, I am going to look at all the features like I did in El Clapo again. Um, so don't worry about that, but you can go look at the El Clapo plugin for more detail on the features as well, but we'll go through them here. So let's just get started, explain kind of what this plugin is what the features are and do some kind of sounds. So I'm just going to go back to the default settings and explain kind of what it is. So it's a finger snap generator, I guess. It's sample based, but has some really cool ways of dealing with samples. So the idea is you can control how many people are snapping at once. And that is with the snap control. Now, as you turn the control, you can notice this loading here. And what that does is load samples based on how many snaps they are. So there's individually recorded samples and they're all put together in a very clever way. And this plugin works in a very clever way. So you're not using a lot more voices when you bring the snaps up. We still have those individual voices. It also has a slop. So if you think about when you've got a group of people in a room all snapping together. Now the timing is what makes it sound big. Now, of course, there's kind of inhuman timing available and that'll be going down low on the, the slop. So if you listen to this, you know, 109 people can't snap on time that well. And then there is 109 drunk people on the other end who can't snap in time at all. So the idea with the slop is to kind of get that sense of how many people, how in time they are, and use these controls together to really get the sound you want. Now, what is also really cool is it has been multi-miked. There's a close mic, which has two mics. You've got a spot mic and an overhead mic, and you have a room mic. And a room mic is really the key to getting that big kind of group sound. It's, you know, part of what makes those kind of sounds kind of work, uh, clapping, stomping, all that, because it's got everyone in a room rather than all the close mics. But the way it works with all the samples is really cool because, you know, you can get like 109 close mics, which is ridiculous if you try to do that, you know, close mic 109 people, or I think the maximum is what, 150. Imagine trying to mic 150 people with spot and overhead mics. I mean, it's pretty much impossible. So it's a really cool the way it deals with that. Now, the close and room mics both have solos, but also an effect section. So you can see here for that intro bit, I did add a little bit of EQ. You have a compressor and an EQ, same with room. This is the same across all three plugins in the kind of group of plugins. So that is really cool feature to have just to quickly dial up sounds and deal with stuff without uh, doing it in your door and also because you've got separate one for room and close it's really good you don't have to use multiple plugins to do that you also have a step sequencer which allows you to put in different kind of rhythms and stuff and you can switch between them if you look down here you have uh, this kind of keyboard layout so on your keyboard you can change different step sequences you can trigger group claps depending on these settings and you still have single claps uh, single snaps, I should say, because this is the snapping plugin. Um, group snaps and single snaps, which is very useful. You could hear that in the beginning. I was going between the single snaps and the group snaps. Now, if we go into the advanced controls, you can see a few other things that are really, really cool as features. You can change it from velocity sensitive, so whatever MIDI you put in, that's velocity, or a single velocity for more of a kind of upfront controlled sound, change the amount of voices, so that really depends on your RAM and resources and such. And with the single snaps, you can control the panning. So centered is kind of like, obviously, how they were recorded centered. Panning, as in the panned mode, means that if you start, so we go back here, 
here is all the way on one side and here is on the other side. So um, for some reason, I can't really hear. We'll turn the room, let's turn the room down. You can probably hear it a lot better. But yeah, you get the idea, you can get it panned across the uh, keyboard or you can go for more centered, it depends on what you want to do. There is also uh, timing which applies this slot control to the um, single clap. So say you've got a sequence in there and that's right quantize on time, but you want to get some of that feeling of people not snapping in time, you can put it on the sloppy feature, which just adds that, and gives a bit more natural kind of yeah, loose timing. And you also can change how many different uh, round robins they are and layers for the generated samples. It's just how realistic it is and how much more detail you get, but you're going to use more resources, obviously. So that's basically all the features. Let's just dive into getting some sounds. We're going to use the step sequence to show you how that works and then adjust the snaps and slop and go between the close and room mics. So you can really hear how many different sounds you can get out of this. So let's open up the step sequencer. And this is very easy to use. You basically have a bunch of sequences. Um, so you can change them all here. Uh, and then you can name them. So this might be sick, awesome sequence. You get, you get my point. You're not probably going to call it that. You can change the time here. So you've got half time and double time. And it does sync with your door. And the way you kind of do things, you can control the velocity here. And if you right click your mouse, you can turn it on and off. So let's just create a quick sequence so we can hear the sounds. Um, and then later on, we will just build some sequences. And I'll show you how easy it is to change them on the fly. So let's just do this for a second. Let's just hear what that sounds like. Let's just do one snap so you can hear it. You can really ha see, you can really hear, should I say, how the velocity really just changes that rhythm, that emphasis. It's really quite natural. So let's leave that running and have a look at the snaps. So as we turn them up, you've got more and more snaps. And then if you put the slop up, you get that kind of more natural thing. Now I find as you bring up the snaps, you want to reduce the slop because the more people, the more that time variation makes it a bit kind of messy. Now we've got to wait for it to load because we've hit the maximum voices here. Um, so that's the problem with using, I guess, 150 claps. So we stop it for a second, leave it to load. Um, you'll notice that the voices go from 150 down to very few because it actually loads new samples, which is the cleverness of it. It does mean like changing parameters real time is probably not what you want to do, but there's probably no reason that you'd want to do that anyway. And so, yeah, obviously if we want something really tight, we can bring it down. But what's really cool, if you bring the snaps down a little bit, we go slop really high, you've kind of got this drunk, sloppy mess. Again, wait for it to load. We could bring the voices up to compensate, so I might just put these up to 300, just so we're getting less and less issues here. Give it a second to load.
Uh, so with this, I, I think when I was doing the Al, Al Clapo review, it didn't seem to be as obvious with that kind of loading. It's just something I'm noticing now as we're changing parameters. Like I said, if you just wait for it to load, and it depends how fast your RAM is, how fast your drive, uh, this isn't an SSD I'm running these samples off. So it takes a little while for them to load into RAM, um, and you can change the generated samples, of course, so we bring those layers down and all that. It's going to load different samples and it might be a little easier. But you probably shouldn't be changing the snaps and slop in real time. That's just not really what you're meant to do with any kind of samples like this. Of course, the idea is you just set it, get your sound, and then program it in. Uh, anyway, so let's have a look at the close and room mics. Now, you can change these in real time without reloading samples. You know, just like that. Because what it does, it, relo it loads the samples for close, the two close mics and the room mic every time you change this. So we're going to bring the slot back to something more usable. And bring the snaps so you can hear what these mics sound like. So let's just solo the close and go between the two different types. I've turned the EQ off. Um, so that's 50-50 of each of them. On the left, you're going to have this spot mic. slot down even more just so we've got a little bit more and then if you turn it all the way to the right you've got the overhead which is a bit darker a bit wider um, so good to kind of blend them and then here we have the room now one thing to notice about the room and you can probably hear it and you've probably been able to hear it there's a lot of this low end build up and this kind of sound and I'm not sure why they kept that in the samples. I actually find it quite annoying. I know they updated the plugin, I thought they would have removed it but I've got the newest version and it's still in there. But it means you can use the EQ to get rid of it so it's not a problem. But let's just listen to the room and then what we're going to do is dial it in with the close. So that's the soloed room, let's turn it off. And you slowly bring it up till you get your desired kind of room sound. Maybe one a little bit more direct. You get the idea. You're kind of getting more of that natural room. It really depends. Now, of course, you don't have to use the room. You can just use the close and feed into a reverb plugin to emulate a room. It's whatever works for you. So let's just lastly quickly look at the compressor and the... EQ section. Now I said this on the Al Clapo review is the biggest problem I have with this is there's no control for the compressor for the volume and as you start using the compressor it turns up the volume because it's got automatic gain and that can be quite annoying so it'd be really nice if they just added a volume control for this whole section. Same with the EQ. Just a master volume would be nice because then you can compare the two without huge volume differences. But let's just dive in. Uh, so the compressor has attack release ratio and a mix control and of course here is threshold. A mix control makes it really good because you can bring in some of the dry mix. So let's just start messing around with the compressor on just the close mics. Turn it on, so you can hear that volume boost. And here's the gain reduction on this little red bit, which is really good to see. And you can still hear some of that kind of airy woofiness come in. So it's my only complaint, so if they change those in the samples, that'd be really cool. The samples sound great, but there's just that, that thing in there that I don't like, but you could use a gate or something to get rid of it. Um, yeah, obviously you can change the attack, change the ratio, blend it back in, let's compare that to dry. You know, it's a very useful compressor. Of course, you could use your own compressor as well. Let's just quickly look at the um, EQ. We can get rid of that. Add some more high end, maybe a little bit of mid, take out some of that and think there's a high pass, grab a high pass in there. This width control is obviously stereo width, which is also very useful. So maybe we want a little bit more kind of up front close mic. And we go to the room. Uh, let's dive EQ as well. Uh, so just quickly on the EQ, I haven't really talked about it. You have a choice of different bands. It's a fully featured four band EQ. 
uh, eq, and you've got the frequency and the Q factor. So very useful there. So the same thing we're going to do. A, whoops, we're going to do a high pass and not a low pass. Where did I put a low pass? That's going to be a high shelf. Um, I'm going to do something like this and turn this on. I reckon. Put a bit of compression on. So you can really sculpt the tone there. We stop that again, maybe we do less snaps, a bit more slop. You know, completely different sound already than we had before if we turn these off. It really allows you to quickly just make sounds, save them as presets, and that way you've got the kind of snap sound you want uh, straight away diving into the plugin. So let's lastly just look at changing the step sequence out with the keyboard. So like I said, if you go back to here, you can see here I'm changing it. So let's just build a couple of step sequences. So let's go to uh, the first one. That's what we had, right? So I'm just gonna hit play. Now the second one we want Third realm we want something like this. Fourth one we might want the opposite. Or maybe we just put the velocity down for these. Something like that. This one we might add some sixteenths or something. This is cool. So then I just change with my keyboard. We got this. And then we're gonna add, still add your own group claps as well. If we go back to this, you can actually see what I'm playing on here. It's a bad playing, but you kind of get the idea. You can just play whatever you want. And if you don't want to use a step sequencer, of course, then you just sequence it in your own door. But it'd be really cool for live stuff where you want to get some rhythms going and play over the top and groove and stuff. That's really cool, especially with all three plugins together playing different sequences. Uh, I guess lastly, it's just there's some presets. And you can see there's all the snapper presets here. And then there's presets to go along with the other plugins. So maybe we just play this sequence and I just let's listen to some presets.
So that's been Lace and that pet. Go check out El Clapo if you haven't. Go check out Dust Boot when it comes out, which should be shortly after this plugin. Um, very easy to use plugin, straightforward. My only criticism is, like I said, the volume thing as a feature needs to kind of have volume in that effects section. And the way that sample has that kind of background, I don't know, it's whatever the room was recorded in, I guess. It's just that, that kind of woof going on. It'd be cool maybe if there was an option for not having that with an extra set of samples. I don't know if they can do that. You know, it's only 1.03 version. I know our club has been updated to 1.1.3, I think. So maybe in a future update. But thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you.